In this video, we are going to talk about the term height with respect to the data structure trees. So let's start by defining what a height of a node is going to be. The height of a node is going to be the number of edges in the longest path from that node to a leaf node. So height of a node is the number of edges in the longest path from that node to a leaf node or an external node. So let's see if we can calculate the heights of all the nodes in an example. So let's say this is the tree I have. So this is going to be my tree. My aim in this example is going to be to find the height of all of these nodes. The nodes from A all the way till I. So the first thing I must do is I must determine in this tree which nodes are going to be the leaf nodes. So the node with no children is going to be a leaf node. H I E, F and G have no children. So I'm going to call them leaf nodes. Now if we go back to the definition of a height of a node, it's going to be the number of edges in the longest path from that node to the leaf node. So now let's take a leaf node say G. Now from this node I want to traverse some path and reach a leaf node. Now for any leaf node the only other leaf node that it can traverse is going to be itself because the direction in which this tree is going to form paths is only going to be one way because A is the parent of B and C so A can go to B or C similarly for B and D. So this is going to be the direction of the path which we can take. Those paths in a tree can only go downwards. So if I am at G, the only leaf node which I can go to is going to be G itself. So how are the number of edges in that path? There are no edges in that path. So the height of a leaf node is always going to be zero. So the height of a leaf node is going to be zero. I'm going to repeat why once more. A leaf node cannot travel to any other node or any other leaf node but itself. So we need to go from this node to a leaf node. The only leaf node it can travel to is going to be itself. What are the number of edges in that path? That path has zero edges. So the height of a leaf node is going to be zero. Now let's go and see the nodes which are going to be just above the leaf nodes. So let me start with node D. Now the only two nodes or the only two leaf nodes that node D can travel to are going to be H and I. What are the number of edges in the path from D to H? That's going to be 1. What are the number of edges from the path from D to I? That's going to be 1 again. So both paths are going to be equally long of one edge. So this node D is going to have a height of 1. Because the longest path from that node to another leaf node is going to have one edge. 
let's look at node C. Node C can travel to node G. How many edges are there in that path? There is one edge. So, and since that is the only path that C can take to another leaf node, we are going to say that that's going to be the longest path and that longest path from C to G has one edge. So the height of C is going to be 1. Now let's look at node B. Node B can travel to leaf node H, leaf node I, leaf node E and leaf node F. So now we have to try to find the longest path it can take to a leaf node. So when B has to travel to leaf node H, it's going to travel to two edges. When B has to travel to leaf node I, it will have to travel through two edges. From B to E is one edge, from B to F is one edge. So which is going to be the longest node uh, or the longest path from this node to another leaf node? It's going, the longest path from B to another leaf node is going to take two edges, which is going to be B to D to H or B to D to I. That's going to have the same equally long lengths. So the longest path from B to another leaf node is going to be equal to two edges. Now let's look at A. Now A can travel to H, I, E, F or G. Now it is our job to find out which is going to be the longest path from A to any of these leaf nodes. A to H is going to take three edges. A to I is going to also take three edges. A to E is going to take two edges. A to F is going to take two edges. And A to G is also going to take two edges. So which was the longest path? A to H or A to I which took both equal, equal to three edges. That is going to be the longest path A can take to another leaf node. So in the longest path that A can take to another leaf node, that is either A to H or A to I, that path is going to consist of three edges. So the height of A is going to equal to three. So this is how you find the height for the different nodes in a tree. The height of the root node or the height of A in this example is going to be considered the height of the tree. So the height of a tree is the height of the root node of the tree. So in this example, the height of the tree is equal to 3. Now there is an observation to be made in this example. The height of any node is going to equal to 1 plus the maximum height of its children nodes. So let me explain that. When we are trying to compute the height of B, we can either take a path which leads to H, I, E or F. So when we are at B, if we want to go to a leaf node by taking a path which goes through D, then it is going to take one more edge than the number of edges D took to reach a leaf node. If we want to go from B to a leaf node through the node E, it is going to take one more edge than the number of edges E took to reach a leaf node. And similarly for F. So if we can find for a particular node which one of its children has the longest path to the leaf node, then we can add on to that longest path by just including one more edge which is from the parent to the child which has the longest path. So let's see how it is working here. B has three children, D, E and F. D takes a path of one edge, E takes a path of zero, F takes a path of zero. 
What is the longest path to a leaf node between D, E and F? It's going to be D because that is going to take one edge which is more than zero edges. So in other words we are trying to find out which of the children is going to have the longest height or the greatest height. So D has the longest height. So when I want to find out the longest path from B to a leaf node, I will just take the longest path from D to a leaf node and add one edge to it. Since I know that the path from D to a leaf node is going to be longer than the path from E or F to a leaf node, I am completely sure that if I use the same path of D to its leaf node by just appending the parent B, then that path from B to that node is going to be the longest path B can take to another leaf node. Let's look at another case where we used the same logic. B has a height of 2, C has a height of 1. So A is going to use the path B used to go to the, its longest to its longest path and it's just going to append itself with one edge. So A can either append itself to B or C. If it appends itself to the path B takes, it's going to take a total of three edges. The two edges B took plus one to connect A to that path. But if it goes through C, it's going to take two edges. That's why we find out which child node has the greater height. And then we add one to that to find the height of the parent. So let's write down our observation. Height of the parent is equal to 1 plus the maximum height of the children or the height of the child with the maximum height. In this way, given a tree, we can calculate the height of all its nodes.